Okay. God bless everyone. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio, air code 646-378-1857. It's a blessing to be here. We have a powerful teaching that we really need to get out. There's a lot of people being deceived with this ministry called Money Cometh Unto Me. And I'm going to show you today that it is totally different than what the Lord says about money and trying to become rich. It's sad that if I, I went to a church one time and I said, how many people want to be millionaires, million dollar law firm, all this old, even anointed ministers, they can be very anointed and get tainted with this money. And it has destroyed the church. Here I am. I'm 61 years of age. My salary is no more than $1,500 a month. That's it. Do I want to have a million dollars? I don't want to have it to uh, have a Mercedes. I don't have a desire for a Mercedes. I don't have a desire for a personal airplane. I would like to put it into the radio ministry to expand me getting the word of God out. I have died to these things, but it is so sad in the church that people are coming to God for wrong purposes. I had it real bad when I was about 15 years ago over that World Changes Ministry, over at Creflo Dollar people was calling me, getting de all demons everywhere. They didn't know nothing about demons, but they showed me about some money. Man told me, uh, I'm mad because God didn't give me my Mercedes Benz SGU. I said, well, where is that in the Bible that God's promised you a Mercedes Benz? <laughs> You can't carry no Mercedes Benz with you in the kingdom of God. God is not of this kingdom. And it's so sad that people are caught up into this foolishness. And I would like to set the record straight biblically to show you that that is not a ministry. Thou money cometh unto me. That's Leroy Thompson's doctrine. That's not the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And you will definitely be surprised tonight when you hear what the purpose of money is for for a believer now uh most people who are rich we're going to show you tonight that does a lot of things to poor people how they destroy their own souls even in the book of ecclesiastes the preacher psalm of solomon was the most richest man on earth he said it's vanity all of it things cannot love you back Christianity is not based on Christ's redemption for Mercedes Benz or to compare to some earthly manifestation that pleases your flesh. That's the wrong concept of Christianity. No, God doesn't want you to be poor. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. How God has anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and who went about doing good, teaching all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Holy Spirit, use me as your oracle. We come up against every demonic spirit that will try to block this teaching. We come up with these false doctrines of money cometh, false promises and false uh, prophetic words over people who have given their money, who've been hurt. Lord, your word says that we're supposed to tithe and have offerings. And Lord, I pray that this teaching will move a person into a position of forgiveness and allow you to redeem them, to teach them who you really are in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I want to get something straight. God doesn't want nobody poor, physically poor, spiritually poor, financially. He doesn't want that. But I'm going to show you that he wants everything for you. But these pastors have taken a lot of scriptures out of the word of God, out of content, and have made and profited off of it. I let a, a, a church go here in Jamaica. I let him go. He got on my radio and said I was with him 15 years. Didn't, didn't he get a chance to meet him? He didn't even want to meet me. He just said, okay, go ahead on. You're not coming on my radio station telling the people send in $190 for the covert virus relief scripture. A bunch of foolishness. God had never told me to do that. As much as I'm in need right now, I will not get on this radio station and beg you and talk you into your money. That's witchcraft. And it's pitiful. It is sad to see that people are doing this today. In 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Beloved, 
I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. It is God's provision and intention that we as believers be healthy and our lives be accomplished by his blessings. He wants all to grow well with him and the work, the plants, the purpose of the ministry, his family, everything should be in a properly direction and God's blessing flowing upon the believer, both physical and spiritual needs. Concerning prosperity, both physical prosperity and spiritual teachings the follows. I said spiritual prosperity. I, I ain't said nothing about no money. Spiritual prosperity. The money that will come when you are able and balanced to sustain money. Now sometimes God blesses people with a lot of money and they blow it. God give them another chance. Get it right this time. But don't be searching and seeking out God because you want him just to give you money. If you have that in your heart, you are under the wrong pretense of salvation. And this stuff is flooding. Mostly a lot of African Americans, I know a whole lot of them, uh, down right down the street off here on Old National down here, this dollar man, Creflo Dollar. And then he had the nerves to get on TV and said he was sorry he trained people. Wrong, they still go and listen to it. And they still buy them a plane. See, this is witchcraft control. And God is tired of this this stuff. It's giving people the wrong precepts of Christianity. As I'm explaining to you, both physical and spiritual needs the Lord want all of us to have. Concerning prosperity, both physically and spiritually, scriptures teaches the following. The word have translated gospel in the Greek, E-U-O-D-O-O, -O -O, literally means to have a good journey, to be led along a good road, according to the meanings of John's primary prayer, was that as we walk in truth of his revelation, we may contain Jesus' provisions and abundant life, John 10.10, 10, God's promise to supply the needs of our lives according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we're going to do a teaching after this on the uh, providence of God's people. God will provide for us, although we should trust God to supply all of our needs materially too, we must recognize the Bible's teaching that we are sometimes experience needs in order to be encouraged to trust him more and to develop our faith through spiritual endurance and ministry. See, if the Lord bless you with a million dollars right now, you would be backslidden, gone, and probably overseas, flying somewhere, buying some foolishness, because you ain't never had it. You don't know how to act. You think you're on top of the world, but you have not planned for that. You got pastors have planned sermons for you and trick you. Oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you may not obey the truth, whom eyes evidently that Jesus set forth among us. God's presence helps in blessing our physical lives and relate to the prosperity of our spiritual life. We must seek God's will, Matthew 6.10, Hebrews 10.7, obey the Holy Spirit, remain separate from spirits of the evil world where he can bless you. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you why God don't want Christians seeking after money. I'm going to show you why in the Bible. God is not against wealth. God gives us the power to get wealth. It is for his purpose. This is God showing his kingdom to be established through money, but not through being rich. Income is really for the ministry to keep the ministry going, but there are so many pastors that have a lavish lifestyle. The pastor get out of the church, he get in the big old van, and everybody riding, he wave off, you don't even see him no more the next Sunday. Or he pulled up in this Mercedes that you have paid for, he's never cast out any demons, but you have paid for him to have $1,500 suits, leather shoes. And, you, what, and, and what did you get out of it? You're still the same, you still don't have a new car, Nothing's changed because a prosperity is not a ministry. 
Now, I'm going to show you something if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. He says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. It's God that gives you power to get wealth. To whom much is given, much is required. God wants us to be blessed, but the route that the prosperity ministry teaches you is totally incorrect biblically. They tell you, for example, in some churches in Jamaica, the one I cut off, they were getting that. In my spirit, was so troubled when I see these poor people working so hard, and these men put grievous burdens on them by amplifying up praise and worship and singing and then they give a lot of word of knowledge. Oh, they have the word of knowledge. That don't mean anything because de the demons can counterfeit anything. You remember in the days of Moses and what the Pharaoh stuck their rod out and, and they snake was moving like a Moses, but Moses snake ate theirs. So the gospel of Christ will eat out the gospel of prosperity because it's not endorsed by Christ Jesus. That's nowhere in the Bible. God gives us the ability to get wealth, to establish his covenant by his authority. How many covenants are there? What is a covenant? God wants to protect you. He wants to bless you. He wants to make sure that you are healthy. Do you know a lot of people rich and they're not even healthy? I'd rather be healthy than be, than be rich. I remember when I had a bag of diverticulitis, it was so humiliating, eight months. I'm teaching with a bag on my stomach. Oh, my God. And I thank the Lord for being with me through that. What is God's covenant? Why did God send Jesus? Let's look at the heart of God. In Matthew 6.33, this is a key scripture to teach you stop looking for money. And by the way, there's no such thing in the Bible. I'm getting a lot of people call me saying generational wealth. No, that ain't in the Bible. That ain't nowhere in the Bible that says that. It speaks of a righteous generation, but not generational wealth, because if the righteousness come out of the generation through the bloodline, God is not distributing his wealth to demons. You, you're a holy man of God, now you're finna give it to your son who's a homosexual. No, it don't work like that. That ain't no generational wealth. You have to cut him off. That's right. That's right. You love him. Why would he get the blessings of your righteousness? And he's in sin. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. See, we, prosperity doctrines don't teach you to seek righteousness first. They seek teach you to sow a seed. And they really pervert the scriptures in order to get you to, to convince you to do that. And I'll show you that momentarily. If we seek his righteousness which is the first thing he wants us to see. But prosperity ministry is opposite of Matthew 6.33. They am not looking for no righteousness. They speak on certain topics, but they go right back to the money. They are always going to have functions for people to do at the church. Now, you have a pastor that has a staff of people. The volunteers come to clean up the church. He does that so he don't have to pay. That goes more in his pocket. The people who go to choir rehearsal, they got to spend gas to go to that church. You ever thought about that? And the tithes and offering, you are volunteering, a labor is not worthy of his hire, the Bible says. They don't care nothing about you. <laughs> a lot of them are very, very connected with each other. They, they clicks. I'm not a no click with no pastor. I'm not the clickest one, man. I'm, I'm the wrong one to be dealing with with that. They invite their best friend to his church. He'll have a revival next month. They normally have six, seven friends. They can rotate that in 12 months. They know what they're doing. They're clickers. Now, to get into the pack with them, you got to give. I was with John Eckhart. 15 years he told me to stop putting his stuff on there i ain't mad at him i'm a pioneer people good he got good teaching but it ain't his teaching it's the lord jesus but it came through his mouth sent me a lawyer called herself the million dollar lawyer i called back look here say i'm the wrong one to be messing with don't call me with no mess i don't care who it is you got 
pastors selling themselves out, writing books, being rich and, and, and leaving you behind. And each time they come back at their church, they expect you to give them some money or they're going to make it good entertainment for you. You're going to see healing and all the work's going to be moving. And, and then what, 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 what you going to get out of it? A promise within seven months, they could be way back. They prophesy something way back. So you can forget about it and come right back again. Keep you under that, under that mirage of foolishness. Oops. Now watch this. I want to go to Luke. Chapter 16, verse 19. It's going to get thick tonight. Because if you're setting up in these churches, you ain't going to like me tonight because I don't care what anybody think about, about me. It really doesn't matter. I, I don't care. I really I ain't worrying about that. I'm worried about what Christ going to think about me. I can't take people's money like that. I just can't do it. I want you to go to Luke. Go to Luke chapter 19, and we'll go to 1 through 10. Luke chapter 19. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. Had a lot of money. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was so little of a stature, a small man, but he was rich. And he ran before and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at the house. Now notice Christ used his richness to get a need met. God don't need you to become personally rich because many people sorrow themselves with many sorrows the Bible speaks of. Oh, we got a lot to show you out the Bible tonight about this thou money cometh because it's a lie. It's nothing but doctrines of devils. First Timothy chapter four, verse one. Notice that Jesus called this rich man now, Jesus was born in the manger, but notice the authority that he has as the son of God. He can give people's money. Well, he can do that for you, too. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord. Thou have of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to you. This house for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. The purpose for income is to seek and to save who's lost. Jesus used this man's income to provide a place of shelter and where he can eat. If you pastors are listening to this, you don't need no Mercedes Benz, a 20, 24, 80, 90,000. And, and a plane? Kenneth Copeland got so many planes, I have never saw him cast out not one demon. You guys are getting caught into a sound, stuff that sounds good. It electrified the soul, but it's no biblical teaching to it. And as they heard these things, he added and spoke a parable, and he was knight to Jerusalem, and because they taught 
that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. And he said unto him, A certain nobleman was in a fair country to receive of himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. And I said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizen hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reside over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given them money, 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 money. This is in red writing. This is Jesus of Nazareth talking about money. Talking about what Creflo Dollar talking about. Talking about what Leroy Thompson talking about in the comments. Money, money, that he might not know much every man had gained by trading. Then came the field, saying, Lord, thy pound has given ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thy authority over ten cities. When God gives you money, he wants you to use wisdom with it. He doesn't want you to use money for self event uh, self lust of vindication have you ever asked how anybody to come to a ministry or listen to me it costs money to run a radio station jesus says in luke 19:10 for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost the purpose for ministry is to seek and to save that which is lost not take their money now I'm going to show you how the game run with these pastors. Sow a seed. They'd love that. This is the most popular verse in a prosperity church that you ever sit in. You're going to hear. They go to Mark chapter 4, verse 1. <laughs> and they twist it. This chapter has nothing to do with money. It really has something to do with the word of God being sown in you and what you're going to do to it. Mark 4, 1 says, And he began again to teach. Jesus was a teacher. I'm so glad I have the anointing as my master. You're sure. I'm a teacher. We need teachers. You need to be taught. No one has told you anything about this prosperity foolishness. You just go to it because it feeds the flesh. And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and set in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came to devour it up. Now, see, if you don't know the Bible, you get mixed up with this. When he says the fowls of the air devour it, he's talking about demonic spirits. If you look in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, 2, chapter 2, verse 1, Ephesians 2, 2, it's a spirit that's in the atmosphere. And when you use the word, wherever you at, it can attack you. Christ is explaining of his word coming into you and the conditions that can happen if you are operating in that, such as this. Now, go to Ephesians 2.2. 2. It says, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Here we go. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. It is a spirit they get in you to stop you from sowing the word correctly. It has nothing to do with money. Mark chapter 4, verse 5, And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprung up because it had no depth of the earth. He's talking about the word of God in you. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about any money. And these prosperity ministers, they love to use this and pervert it. I'll show you what they like. They really likes to hit this one. Now, notice it says in Mark 4, 6, but when the sun was up, 
it was scorched and because it had no root it withered away if you don't have no good root of Christianity the foundation the salvation the Holy Spirit recognizes that Jesus is the Son of God breaking all curses casting out demons now you got a good root coming out you have a good soil he's not talking about no money here then he said in verse 7 and some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit still ain't talking about no money verse 8 and others felt on good ground so can money fall on the ground he's not talking about money and these prosperity ministers love to use mark chapter 4 and some fell among thrones, and the thrones grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Now, here's how to get your money. And others fell on good ground, and did yield fruit, and sprung up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some a hundredfold. Now, however, my name is Dr. Leroy Sonberger. I want to tell you that God is good. Say, Amen. Yes. Money cometh unto me. Nothing but demons coming out of his mouth. And you getting all worked up. And they throwing that money. He jumping up and down. And it's exciting to you because you think you're going to get something by giving him that. No, you have to tithe unto the Lord. That don't work like that. They're good with this one. Now, <laughs> boy, it's, it's a lot we got to, to learn. Now for the good part. How many of you know that we're not supposed to be trying to be being to be getting rich? How many of you know that, that that's in the Bible? That we are not supposed to be trying to get rich financially. A lot of people don't know that, but that's biblical. And I hope that I can expose this ministry that really gets a lot of people wrapped up in materialistic things. Craft Lord Dollar teaching on the six principles of wisdom and he got something who got to do with money when he talking about that. It's always money, money. Did you know that Pastor Appreciation Day is not in the Bible? <laughs> Did you know that anniversary day? See this is a way that they accumulate income. Christmas time, they'll give a couple of, what, five, six, twenty, thirty gift cards. They ain't spending no more than four or five thousand dollars. And, oh, the pastor gave us something. Well, why don't you get a whole church something that's just drawing a gift where certain people can get it and you can't get it? That's, God says he shows no respect to person. If you're going to give a Christmas and you're giving it to two or three people, what about somebody there that don't have it, but they gave it last time to you? Do you, have, do you know that do they have pastors to set up tithe offices? I got a brother that's going to tithe. I'm going to send it right back to him. He don't even know it. Lord told me to send it back to him. You see, I'm not in this for money. I am so sick of this ministry and people run into some foolishness and don't have no personal relationship with Jesus. Please just read to this scripture here in uh, the book of Proverbs. We're going to read 23 verse 4. In Proverbs 23 verse 4, God warns us, you're not going to hear prosperity ministers. Now the scriptures I'm about to give out now, that you ain't going to hear them on this. <laughs> no. No, you ain't, you ain't. You ain't going to hear this. Proverbs 23, 4 says, labor. I mean work. Labor not to be rich. Cease. I mean stop totally. Cease from thy own wisdom. That's independent from God. Own. But us it's God the Father and the Holy Spirit in the Bible. Anytime you hear own or might in the Bible, might means that, you know, you, it's up to you whether you're going to do it or not. So here, God is saying that the human mind, okay, and the human wisdom is what people use to become rich. 
because he told us that we ain't supposed to do this. Now I'm going to show you something without Christ, how foolishness that your human wisdom is. It is so satanic. <laughs> it's just a satanic, and you're going to be saying, huh? Let me show you. Go to the book of James. James chapter 3 verse 15 says, This wisdom descended not, uh-oh, labor not to be rich. Cease, stop, from thy own, you, by yourself, your own, own, <laughs> your own wisdom. Your own wisdom is so devilish that it's pathetic. Let's read James 3.15. This wisdom descended not from above, but it's earthly, 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 sensual, devilish. Why God don't want you to become rich? Because he has the richness. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God has to prepare you to get this, to get that. The Lord blessed me with a 2002 Ford Taurus excellent condition air condition it runs good brand new seats re overhaul was given to me i didn't ask for a mercedes he gave me my transportation no i'm not in no mercedes i don't need to be in no i wouldn't want that i couldn't have nobody armor baron holding my bibles i'm a soldier i hold my own bible i don't need nobody hold no bible for me bunch of foolishness so your wisdom God don't want you to be going after if it's because it's independent from God. This is why he doesn't want us to become looking for riches. He said, this wisdom descended not from above, but it's earthly, sensual, devilish. Proverbs 23, 4 says, labor not to become rich. Cease from thy what? On wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom. Well, what wisdom? Human wisdom calls you to become, want to become rich. Well, why does God want it like that? Because... In Deuteronomy 8.18, he says, he created wealth. He said, he created wealth. He said, he created wealth. I'm on, on air, on air, I'm on air, on air, on air, livedeliverance.com. I am in Facebook. Thou money cometh, not in the Bible. On air, on air. Now. If you turn to Luke chapter 16, we're going to go to Luke chapter 16, and we're going to go to verse 9, 19. We don't hear any. Prosperity preachers uh, teach this now. Luke 16, 19. Turn to Luke 16, 19. <clears throat> Luke chapter 16, verse 19 says, There was a certain Rich man. This is why God don't want you talking about you want to be rich. I don't want to be like Kanye West. Rich. Foolishness. See how foolish people do stupid stuff? Joe Biden, he rich. Do foolish stuff. Obama, he rich. Trump, he rich. See, rich people oppress you. You didn't know that? And you want to be, you want to, here you got your hand talking about, I want to be rich. God didn't tell us to do that. He said, seek not to become rich. I just showed you, use your own wisdom. Because when you use your own wisdom, it opens up to things to become devilish. Now watch this. Let's go to James. Go back to James chapter 2. 
and then we'll go to Luke 16, 19, but the Lord just, well, I want to hit this. Let's go to James 2, 1. And to hold that, go back to Luke 16, 19. We're going to be bouncing around a lot of scriptures today. Uh, James 2, 1 says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to person? For if there come unto you an assembly of a man with a gold ring, that go richness, in godly apparel, oh, that's rich people, and there cometh also a poor man in violet raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the good clothing, and say unto him, Set thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my stool. James 2, verse 4, Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and become judge of evil thoughts? See there? Because you see a rich person, you'll look at him, you'll, you'll help him out before you help others, because you got lust and invasion. Hope he'll give you a, a little tip or something. Then in verse 5 of James 2 5 says, Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world? Now look what he says. He didn't say nothing about no money, he said, Rich in faith. Y'all don't want that. Thou money coming unto me. And people think that this man is right, but they don't know the Bible. They, you ain't never heard no sermon like this. Because you need the truth. This is coming from the Holy Ghost. Look at this. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not chosen, have not God chosen the poor of this world, of this world, rich in faith, and hires of the kingdom which he had promised to them that love him. Now look at verse 6. But ye have not despised the poor. Verse 6. Do not rich men oppress you. That's out the Bible. But y'all talking about y'all want to be rich. So you want to be rich to oppress people. Well, why would God say that rich people would oppress other people? The spirit of the vibe that is in rich people. People feel that they cannot be... Uh, cut down, they got enough money and they good until they run out then they be calling back on God because it's foolishness, it's, it's all vanity money is a mechanism for your needs not for your wants but you can't say that to an American society where you have Christianity is involved itself with just thy money cometh no different than Christians getting involved with politics now I said that he says but ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat. Now, let's go back to the rich man again. Since y'all want to be rich in the flesh, I want to be rich in spirit. I want to be what God wants me to be because the money is going to come if I seek God. See, I don't need, <laughs> I don't need to put a thousand dollars in line for God to do something for me. I need to be obedient to his word. And make my tithes and my offerings and keep my covenant with him, whatever what I go through. But see, we don't want to go through trials and tribulations. This is why we're more attracted to this gospel. It's very easy, it doesn't condemn, and it pushes a lot of idolatry. My children, present thyself away from all idols, first John five twenty one. It is demonic. Money cometh unto me, that's demonic. Now let's go back to uh, Luke chapter 16 and let's look at another rich man now we saw the rich man in uh, James uh, 2 5 he says rich men will oppress you in 2 6 that's what Jesus brother said now Jesus of Nazareth the son of God your savior who you call the Lord says this about rich people and poor people the rich man and Lazarus there was a certain rich man. Notice again, here a rich man, Zacchaeus came out the tree, and God used his richness to have a place to stay. That's why we don't have to seek richness. We have to seek righteousness, and then that comes when you seek righteousness, and when you're obedient, he meets your needs, and he blesses you. Allow him to chastise you, because to whom much is given, much is required. These pastors are not interested in telling you that. They won't be giving you one dime. I'm helping a, a, a brother in the Lord. I'll help anybody if they're my members of the church. 
because when I get my personal settlement that I, I'm going to get with my government, I'm paying all my staff members by myself out my pocket. I, I don't like to ask for money because I don't have to. I like to ask to give and ask God to teach you how to sow a seed correctly. Do you know some people are hurt because of this type of doctrine? People have been used with these types of ministers. The rich, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fast dispunctiously every day, look good. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gates full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, but the rich man also died and was buried. And where was he at? And in hell, he lift up his eyes. See, when you're rich, you got pride, Leviathan. You think you can't be stopped. You think money can buy everything. You get very arrogant with God. And God has a way to bring you down <laughs> and put you humble if you're really called by him. You pastors who's teaching this prosperity doctrine, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I rebuke all of you. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this Plain. But Abraham says, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received the good things. So you go get your things right now and, and, and ignore God if you want to. Get your money and not, not do your tithes. You're supposed to tithe. I ain't trying to teach not to tithe, but I ain't, I'm trying to tell you you ain't got to go to no $1,000 line, $500 line. No, you got to give your offerings to God, but you can't give it the way that these prosperity teachers been teaching you. So once you get your riches on earth, don't, 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 don't think you ain't gonna go to hell because here, if a rich man doesn't humble himself, it's very difficult for you to get into the kingdom of heaven. Even Jesus say, it's hard for a rich man to get in heaven and you're gonna eye of a needle going through a camel. Because richness pulls you away from God. Look up what happened to King Solomon. He had more wives than any man can have, that wasn't enough. But Abraham says, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received the good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comfort and thou art tormented. Is it really worth selling your soul to get people's money? To be comfortable in your lavish car driving? You ain't doing nothing for the kingdom of God and your, and your tail going to die one day. Y'all don't think about life after death, do you? You're going to die. You're going to die, and I'm going to die. And where your riches going now? <laughs> See, this is a mistaught doctrine. God wants you to be rich, but through his way, through obeying his word. Now, let's look at some scriptures here. God has house of riches. It's all in his kingdom. That's in Proverbs 19.14. Okay, it's called house and riches. They belong to God. Let's go to Luke chapter 6, verse 20. And he lift up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall be laughed. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their journey company, and shall reproach you, and cast you, and cast out 
your name and evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did the fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich. You see that? Jesus says this. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, since you, you people want to talk about money cometh, generational wealth, that's nowhere in the Bible. Look what Jesus says. But woe unto you, my God. But woe unto you that are rich. For ye have received your consolidation. You done had your, your, your thing, and you're going to pay. You've been arrogant. You've been obnoxious. You get on first class flights and you holler at a person. Don't you know I can get you arrested? Do you know who I am? You got a lot of pride when you're rich. See, <laughs> this stuff is, is foolishness. Now, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 8 through 20. Y'all still want to be rich? Financially and not rich spiritually, just the financial part. This is going to happen to you if you don't have the Holy Ghost in you. If you don't have the Spirit of God leading you how to use your money. If you don't understand the principles of Proverbs to use your money, you're going to be poor. You have to humble yourself to be rich both in spiritual things and in physical things. To whom much is given, much is required. Why is God going to give you 60000 when you blow 5000 Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 8 through 20. If thou seest the oppression of the poor and violate preventing of judgment and justice in a province marble, not at the manor, for he that is higher than the highest regarded, and there be higher than they. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all the kingdoms himself and served by the fields. He that loveth silver, he that loveth silver, he that loveth silver, money cometh, he that loveth money cometh, he that loveth money cometh, he that loveth money cometh unto me, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10, he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Nor he that loveth abundance with increase, this is also vanity. A bunch of foolishness. These men was more richer than Jay Z ever be. Here come Kanye West saying bad things about Jews people. I don't deal with them. I don't like nobody to do against evil. But money got them like that. Money changed people. I don't want that to change me. I want I want to get to heaven because I'm not interested in in this stuff here. I, I'm gonna be gone. I'm not interested. I am so happy with the little nice house I got. I I uh, I don't need the burden. I don't need women looking at me. Go ahead on because I'm trying to teach the word. Foolishness. Let me read this again. Money cometh. He that loveth silver, this is coming from the most richest man on earth, King Solomon. So if you don't know uh, who this brother is, <laughs> the title of the book of the Hebrew Old Testament, Quotitius, the assembly literally means a whole host of addresses as assembly. The word occurs seven times in the book of Ecclesiastes, the preacher. The correspondence is the unusedness of human wisdom and philosophy. The emptiness of pleasure and wealth, the vanity of great accomplishments, the iniquity of hard work, a time created for everything, the beauty of God's creation is more prevalent than your own personal accomplishment. Now, who said these things? King Solomon. Go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Verse 12. Ecclesiastes 5 12. 
Go 510. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. When good increase, there are increase that eat them. And what good is them to be otherwise, therefore, saving the beholding of them which their eyes? The sleep of the laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. See there? It brings a lot of misery to people. Everybody calling for you. They want your money. The devil's the God of this world. He'll send everybody to you. There is a soul evil which I have seen under the sun, namely riches. Now King Solomon said this. I didn't say this. But that's what y'all seeking. Bing, bing, new car. Always asking God for some garbage. You never say, I'm thankful, Lord. What about the Lord hit you like Job? Make you suffer. What you going to do then? Give up? If he ain't feeding you what you want, you're going to worship him based on the condition, then you're not a Christian. That ain't Christianity. The Lord don't want you coming to him because he got to give you something for his blood, which has something to do with some stupid foolish foolishness. And what the richest man on earth said, there is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely riches. Ecclesiastes 5.13 Keep from the owner, therefore, to their hurt. But those riches, King Solomon, but those riches perish by evil travail. And he began and beget it a son, and there is nothing in his hand. And it came forth as mother's womb naked, shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. It ain't going nowhere when you die. King Solomon said that. I didn't say that. Still want to be rich? All right. Let's go to, uh, since you want, you still want that money. Let's go to Romans. Now, uh, for, oh, so many scriptures. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Proverbs 18, 11. The rich man's wealth is his strong city and as a high wall in his own conceit. See how money get people? You still want to be rich? All this thing leading to nothing but lust of vindication and the flesh. Because God said be in the world but not of it. Once you become a Christian, you're supposed to be dying to the world. Here you are talking about money cometh. Go on, go back out in the street. Why are you with the Lord? <laughs> Salvation ain't based on money and cars. It's based on righteousness. It's based on the kingdom of Christ establishing itself in your heart so that you can people can see Christ in you, so that your family can see Jesus in you, so that you can have peace because things cannot love you back. Sometimes the Lord can take things away from people. Hopefully it could be a lesson that he's trying to scourge you and to see, do you really trust him? I haven't bought a pair of tennis shoes in three and a half years. I have a 22-year-old car. I don't have no one but eight, nine pair of jeans and many shirts because I'm on the Internet. I have to make sure that money is taking care of this radio station. God means, no, I'm not rich financially like that, but I'm definitely rich spiritually. I can hear God. I can hear the Holy Spirit. I'm humble to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives me these teachings. I will not swap this over being rich. Because everything in the Bible shows you about rich people ain't that good. Especially when he tells us, seek not to become rich. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. And as a high wall in his own conceit. Jesus Christ. Turn to Zephaniah chapter 118. 
Zephaniah 1 18. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedily resident of all them that dwell in the land. So your money can't stop God when he want to do something to you. And money can't do everything. But you know what? If you serve God, he will bring the money to you and humble yourself. But when you get money on your own human understanding, it becomes devilish. You are separated from God because the temptations of what you can get, what you can buy, will pull you away from the peace of Christ. Romans chapter 10 verse 12. Romans chapter 10 verse 12 for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord is all is rich unto all that call upon him now this rich here is with money and being rich spiritually God got it all so he don't you don't need to seek it in your own ideology in your own conceit because it will pull you from God. When God humbles you, I'm 61 years old. I, I'm able to handle money now. I'm 61. I've made mistakes. Money is a way to me to keep this radio ministry on. I, I can't think I need a Mercedes Benz. I don't have the money for that because I don't have too many people that sow here. And whatever God gives me, believe me, God sees that I use it wise and he blesses me to keep me on air. But he can do the same thing for you. You don't have to be involved in any church that's sending you, breaking you every Sunday. Then on Monday you come, they got something to go. Then Tuesday got the leadership kind. Then the singles, oh boy, the singles night, that's the night when fornication spirits jump all over each other. There ain't no deliverance in there. And that now you're going up in there. Uh, give the pastor a, a special offering his birthday today. I got to give him some. He's sitting there there. <laughs> Man, please, don't, don't nobody be giving me nothing for no anniversary, none of that. Just sow a seed so I can stay teach, keep, stay on air. All right, before we close, let's, let's deal with this one. I want to show you something in Romans. I, I said that. Let's go to Romans 16, 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but rather their own bellies and good works and fair speeches, deceits of the heart of the simple. When you rich, you're not going to be humble. Impossible. Now, let's look at what the Lord says about this. Go to 1 Timothy. Go to 1 Timothy. And I'd like for you to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Notice it says the love of money in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 6. But godliness which or with contentment is great gain. And nothing about no money. Because if you seek the kingdom of God and his he's going to do that. I did not know God was going to give me a, a car. I did not have a car. I did not know the Lord gave me a 2002 Ford Taurus. I needed that. It's a need. When we get caught up in the spirit of mammon, that's a demonic spirit, mammoth. He was so loving gold, he forgot God. He, he hurry up went with the devil when the devil told him, you'll be over the gold. And he left the kingdom of God as an angel. Angel of mammoth. Love gold. And you people are dying for that. Working two hours, two jobs. Gonna always want to go on a vacation. Spending money here. It's pleasing the flesh. Money will move you away from God. You got so much money you don't even want to read the Bible. You want to go out to eat and then go to the hiking and all this old stupid foolishness. 
you know that we just barely coming through the Bible say we are like a speck we just passing through we like a vapor and you're gonna pass in person all trust even God said you can't come up to heaven you ain't gonna carry it with you money coming that is not biblical first Timothy 6 6 says but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into the world and it's certain we can carry nothing out and having food and raiment let us be there and content watch this but they that will be rich since y'all want to be rich now we we'll go back to that but they that want to be rich they that want to be rich they that want to be rich fall into temptations and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful loss this is why god doesn't want you to be being rich with all that money he's laying out what's going to happen to you and you still want to be rich you've been taught that go to school get a good education the mind is a terrible thing to waste you get rich now you got money now your devil gonna pull you to be political you give two million to the democratic party and get you a lobbyist and go up there and cut me a deal then you go to the republican party and then you cut a deal with a republican and you cut a deal with an independent and you're being used by the devil now you got some money to get on a helicopter and buy somebody out constantly oppressing people through your lust of vindication and your greed but they that will be rich fall into temptations and snares and into many foolish and hurtful lust which drown men in their destruction and petition for the love of money for the love of money, money coming unto me, pay, pay very close attention to this, Leroy Thompson. For the love of money is the root of all evil. All evil. You got anointed men of God has a root of all evil in them taking your money. Something's wrong with our society. Something is wrong with our society that we live in. You put your trust in some preacher you don't even know. And he sends you straight to hell and took your money and you got nothing out of it. These preachers are nothing but false prophets. We close with Second Peter chapter two verse one, but they were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnation heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction, and many shall follow their precious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken. They ain't gonna teach you the truth. Now watch. This is how they get your money, and through covetousness, covetousness, shall they with F E I G N E D framed words, watch this, make merchandise of you. They're making merchandise of you. Whose judgment now and of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. F-E-I-G-N-E-D words. The false teachers will commercialize the gospel. This is the prosperity ministry. It's commercializing the gospel. We don't commercialize it. You don't hear me sit me in no tuxedo stand like this here, holding a Bible, got my anointed hands with my uh, nails done. I don't, I'm just an ordinary person. I'm trying to get to heaven. See, uh, this means a lot to me because I used to, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me read this first. The false teachers will commercialize the gospel being expert in greed and in getting money from believers to enhance their ministries and lifestyles. That's what they're doing. Believers must be aware that one of the chief methods of false ministers is to use F-E-I-G-N-E-D words to tell impressiveness but false stories or to give extravaganza statistics in order to impress God's people to give money. They glorify themselves and enhance their ministries with their fabricated stories. Thus, 
the unwary and sincere child of God becomes an object of exploitation through his finances because these ministers define God's truth and people with greed and deceit. They are assigned to condemnation and destruction. Father, I come in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I thank you for this word. Thy word is truth. God's word is true. Breshe and Elohim the Kun Shitete Kanaba at Rakosha Tadreka in Rokosha to the Berasa Tiki at Roko Ishik in Ababarasa. For the Lord says unto me, You are my children, hearken unto these words of my words, seek my kingdom, and I will bless thee. Let me put you through trials and tribulations to chasten you, to prepare you for the things that I have for you. Be not bastards and rebellious unto me, saith the Lord, for the days are being easier now to sin. For I see the unrighteousness in the world. I am Jesus of Nazareth, and I will protect Israel and all those who call upon me, for I am the Son of God. Lord have mercy. God bless all of you. Jesus of Nazareth. We want to thank the Lord for his word. Father, we thank you. Boy, I smell roses. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God is so good. Come on into the Brawl Talk. We're going to praise God up in here now. 646-378-1857. Hit option number one. We're going to be praising the Lord. We're going to open back up the doors to our brothers and sisters who are teaching and listening to us in www.livedeliverance.com. Be not deceived. Don't let these people deceive you. Please study the Bible for yourself and please come out of these so-called prosperity ministries that they're not biblical now you heard from the Word of God as my pastor said the choice is yours what are you gonna do in memory of my pastor Wayne C Thompson God bless go to www.live deliverance internet radio I'm a disciple of Wayne Thompson I'm also a disciple of Derek Prince and I've been under Wayne Thompson for 23 years. Fellowship of Faith Church International, 3461162. East Point, Georgia. Dotson and Connolly Drive in East Point, Georgia. Shout out to Fellowship of Faith Church International. Thank God for Pastor Wayne C. Thompson, ex-United States Marine. God bless this man. Wonderful man, a good spiritual father. Much respect for this man. Much respect for all of you who called on the Lord. Please don't be deceived. Sow a seed. I'm not trying to be no prosperity ministry now. Just whatever God put on your heart, that's how we do it here. I ain't going to be begging and uh, I need a special offering. I'm going to die tomorrow. No, I'm not definitely in the power of the tongue. We do have needs, and I pray God move upon your heart tonight to help us. We are in need, and he will meet the needs here. I know that. I pray that you be part of the need that he would use you to sow that seed here. Go to LiveDeliverance.com. If you'd like to be a member here, go to LiveDeliverance.com at OvertonNavy1. Email OvertonNavy1 at gmail.com. Again, OvertonNavy1 at gmail.com. 646-378-1857. Lower left-hand side of our PayPal site. Sow a seed. Keep us on air. God bless you. We're going back to regular broadcasts. Good night.